We're going to take a look at molarity now. So in the last, in the beginning of this chapter, 3.1, 3.2, we now understand what a mole quantity is. And so now we're going to take a look at this concept of molarity. Uh, mole concepts are great. Uh, we can determine how much stuff we have based on the mass that we'd weigh out in the lab to figure out how many moles of we need. And what we're starting to find out, like when we were doing the empirical and molecular formulas, those mole quantities um, are really important for defining um, how much of each individual atom that we actually have. So we need to continue that concept, that molar concept, into the next chapter as well, where we start talking about reactions, where a reaction where we're reacting moles of X plus moles of Y to give us some product. And the reason that we have to use moles is because the masses of the nuclei, as we saw, weigh different amounts. So I can't have an equal amount of hydrogen and to oxygen is quite different than an equal mole quantity of hydrogen to oxygen. So mass and moles are not equal. You always have to go through the periodic table to go from grams to moles or moles to grams, because again, masses are different. When we're dealing with solutions, and most of the time we are dealing with some kind of mixture, typically a homogeneous mixture, again, a solution, uh, we often talk in terms of concentrations. Whenever we have an impurity or we have some substance inside of another substance, we're talking about a solution and we have to talk about a concentration. So a concentration is defined as the amount of solute dissolved in any given quantity of solvent or solution. Essentially, it's the part over the whole. How much of some small substance do I have in the greater quantity? So in order to kind of talk more about concentration, we have to talk about the difference between solute and solvent. So these are two terms that are pretty important to know when we're looking at uh, mixtures and especially when we're taking, looking at these solutions that we're going to run reactions with. So solute, it is the, uh, the substance, the pure substance in lesser quantity there can be more than one so instead of substance really what i should say is substances in lesser quantity okay so we're talking about the amount of something that i have the solvent is the substance in greatest quantity. The substance in greatest quantity. And there is only one of these. So let's use just the example of something like seawater. Okay, so seawater is very, I'm using seawater specifically, not salt water. So seawater, very clearly, this is an aqueous solution, and we're going to use that term quite a bit, and I'm gonna bring it up again. Aqueous equals a water as the solvent. So whenever you hear the term aqueous, you should think water as the solvent. So an aqueous solution has water as the solvent. That's the one in greatest quantity. What is the solute in seawater? Well, you should see something like sodium chloride, there's some magnesium chloride, there's some calcium carbonate, all of these substances count as solute, they're lesser quantities. Okay, depends on how much there is, uh, it's going to kind of change things, but ultimately, a solute is the thing that is dissolved within the solvent. Okay, so solute, there can be more than one solvent, it's the thing in greatest quantity. So if you think about air, okay, again, as a solute solvent, air is a solution. Okay, so it does count as a uh, it could have a molarity ultimately. So what is the solvent gas in air? So which gas is in greatest quantity? Nitrogen, nitrogen is in greatest quantity. So nitrogen is actually dissolving everything else technically. So nitrogen has, and then the solutes would be oxygen, CO2, a little bit of hydrogen, a lot of argon. So, so you're seeing again, solute are the things in smaller quantity and solvent is the one in greatest quantity when we're dealing with a solution. So we use this term molarity as kind of our pinnacle of identifying things. And we're actually going to learn why it's not the greatest to use, but it's actually pretty effective for what it does. So molarities, molarity is always going to be defined as the moles of solute over liters of solution. Okay, so moles of solvent over 
leaders of solution. So it's in pretty important solute. Okay, so moles of solute, by the way, you're gonna see the term N, N is equal to moles. So whenever you see lowercase N, it's always moles in chemistry. So N, actually, let me just move that then. Uh, yeah, so N is equal to moles. And solute is gonna be a specific substance that we're interested in. So in our salt water, our seawater example, it might be so the solute it might be moles of salt, okay? And then finally, the volume of solution, there is a difference between solution and solvent. This is volume of solution. This means the entire mixture. So this means solvent and solute combined equals the whole solution. So what you're gonna notice is a lot of these, some of them are going to be solute over the total, being solvent and basically total solution. And some of these concentration units when we get to the 3.4 are actually just gonna look at just the solvent, okay? So just recognize it's a solution, it's the entire thing. Makes things life pretty easy. And um, yeah, so capital M is the unit for molarity and it is always going to be moles, M-O-L. We don't put an E or an S on the end per liter. That is the that is the big unit that we need to know for this. Capital M is moles per liter. Lowercase m does mean something different. So you must have mass if, when it's a variable and actually molality when it's something else. So capital M is what you should be using for molarity. Okay, good. One conversion quickly I will mention because um, we're going to use this a bunch. How do you find moles, moles of something for a solution? If you need to figure out how many moles of substance X you're always going to essentially just multiply the molarity of X times the volume, but make sure the volume is in liters. And that is always how we'd find moles of whatever substance you're looking for. Just write that down for now. We're going to use that a bunch later, um, but it's a good idea. It's just a rearrangement of that reaction of capital M is equal to, yeah, it's just a rearrangement of this. That's all it is. Okay, so this question, what is the molarity of barium nitrate, so of a barium nitrate solution if seven moles of barium are dissolved in enough water to make two liters of solution. So again, we start off really simple. What is the, identify what we need, what is the molarity of the barium nitrate solution? So what is the molarity of my barium nitrate solution? And that's what we're looking for. Uh, we have N moles of barium, or we have moles of barium nitrate, equal to 7.0 moles. Remember lowercase n is moles. Dissolved enough water to make two liters. So my volume is equal to 2.0 liters. And so this one is pretty straightforward. All we simply have to do, what is the molarity of the solution? All we simply have to do is molarity is equal to moles of barium nitrate all over volume of the total solution. So moles is 7.0 moles over 2.0 liters. My molarity should be 3.5 capital M molar. There's my answer. Okay, so 3.5 molarity, molar, uh, 3.5 capital M, okay? Good. All right. So same question here. Again, I'm going to have these in class. We're going to go over these in class, but what is the concentration of, uh, what is the concentration? And oftentimes when you say concentration, I'm asking for the molarity. So what is the concentration in, mol in molarity of this solution here? So we have 222 grams of calcium chloride, but of course we need to convert that into moles. So give that a go, figure out how, what the concentration of that solution is. So we can use molarity as a conversion factor. Again, a lot of these things like density can be used as a conversion factor. So using molarity as a conversion factor to molar NaOH just simply means that two moles of NaOH is in one liter of water, right? So two molar sodium hydroxide is equal to two moles of NaOH in 
one liter of solution. So we can use this concentration as a way, as a conversion factor, because we know that for every, uh, I guess I should do it this way. So every one liter of solution, I have two moles NaOH, okay? So how many moles of H2SO4 are there in 40 mils of a three molar solution? Okay, so how many moles of H2SO4 are there in 40 mils of a three molar solution? So my volume is equal to 40.0 milliliters. My concentration is going to be 3.0 molar. And I wanna know the moles of H2SO4. That's what we're looking for. So let's just write out the molarity formula. Molarity is equal to moles per liter. Okay. And essentially what we're doing here is one way you could do it, three molar, because we have that value for concentration, is equal to n number of moles divided by 40.0 milliliters. Of course, we would convert that into 0400 liters, right? Move the decimal three times and you have liters and do the math and there you go. But let's use it as a conversion factor instead. So that you could do it that way with the molar, molar concentration. Instead, I'm gonna rearrange the equation or I'm just gonna kind of look at the thing that I looked at before. So moles, well, yeah, moles is equal to concentration times volume. Again, volume in liters. So concentration being 3.0 moles per liter times volume, which is 0 0.0400 liters. Liters cancel and we end up with zero point uh, two sig figs, one, two moles H2SO4. We're gonna end up using this thing quite a bit, okay? And it's how the conversion factor is gonna work. I mean, the other way, if we actually wanted to do it totally like a conversion factor, my original experimental number is 0.4 or 0 0.040 0 milliliters times the molarity. I guess I should have, yeah, times the molarity. So I want milliliters. Oh, that's liters, actually. I want liters on the bottom. I want moles on the top. 3.0 moles is equivalent to one liter. And the math is exactly the same. You end up with 1.1212 moles H2SO4. So again, no matter which way you do it, you're always going to end up with the same thing. Um, and that's how we do how use it as a conversion factor. So how many grams of sodium hydroxide are there in 150 mils of a 0.2 molar solution? So again, you're gonna take this and you're gonna take the extra step and convert from grams ultimately. So we should, you can do it as a conversion. You should start, you can start with 0 0.150 liters and go from there. And we can work on that. Again, we'll work on that in class as well. All right, next up. Here's another example, give this one a go. Uh, how many milliliters in a two molar solution would you need? Uh, would you need if, uh, let's see, how many milliliters of a two molar solution would you need if you needed 0.3 moles of sodium hydroxide? So this is solving for a volume. Uh, again, you're gonna start with the number of 0 0.30 moles and you're gonna solve for volume. So you're gonna set this up where you want moles on the bottom and you ultimately want liters on the top, which you're gonna convert into milliliters and solve that way. Again, conversion factors work like they always work. You can just continue to do them until you get where you need. That should give you the answer. So hopefully you can figure that out. And I'll show you the multiple ways that you could do it, but that will certainly work. Okay. So let's talk about dilution. This is something that we're gonna do pretty regularly um, and it's a really good skill to have. So when we're doing certain when we're doing certain labs, I'm probably going to have you guys mixing the solutions because again, it's a really good skill to have. So dilution works in a pretty simple way. Uh, we have this equation: concentration molarity of the concentrated 
solution times molarity of the uh, times the volume of the concentrated solution is equal to molarity of the dilute solution times volume of the dilute solution. So it's always going to be an equal number. Ultimately, what that comes down to is the volume and concentration, the moles of your concentrated are going to be equal to your moles of your dilute solution. So you're going to always solve for one of these substances, typically not the concentrated one because you can't get, you can only dilute. So you're going to be solving for the other side. The better way to look at it, instead of looking at concentrated versus dilute, you're just simply going to say, okay, V1, C1 equals V2, C2. So volume and constant times concentration of solution one is equal to volume times concentration of solution two. Again, they're connected through this idea of molar quantity. So when you're solving for this, the best thing that you can do is recognize, okay, what is my solution? First solution, what is my second solution? Isolate them and then go from there. I see. All right. So let's take a look at this, this problem here. If 50 mils of a six molar solution are diluted. Okay. So 50 mils of a six molar solution, this is my solution one, are diluted to a new volume of 100 mils. That's my solution two. What is the new molarity? Okay, so V1, C1 equals V2, C2. So my volume one and my concentration one equal to my volume two. And the only thing I'm missing is new molarity that would be my concentration too. So that's what I'm gonna solve for. So V1 is 50 milliliters times concentration of six molar times my volume two, which is 100 milliliters times my new concentration. So I'm called solving for the dilute solution. Okay, I don't, again, I don't care which solution is dilute and which one's not, um, but we do have to do a little bit of thinking about how we're gonna make this happen. So if 50 mils of six molar solution are diluted to a new volume of hundred mils, what's the new molarity? So just simply do math at this point. So um, I guess I could just get rid of the parentheses because we don't need them. I'm gonna divide both sides. I just wanna show you this just in terms of concentration or in terms of units, milliliters cancels. So as long as your volume and your concentration are in the same units, you don't have to change them. So mills cancels, this side cancels that, you end up with concentration two is equal to 50 times six molar because I've already canceled my units. I'll divide it by a hundred, do the math and you end up with a solution of three molar, which makes sense. So six molar, if you dilute it to hundred mils, so you've essentially doubled the volume, you've added twice as much water, it is twice, it's, it's half the concentration or you've diluted it, you know, twice, two X. And so you end up with a concentration of three molar, okay? So to this, to what new volume must 200 mils of a 10 molar solution be diluted? And this is typically what you're gonna see as a problem. So you wanna create a new solution, you need to know how much you need to dilute it by. So you need to know how much, um, yeah, how much you need to add in order to make something happen. So solve this one again using V1, C1 equals V2, C2. There should be no mystery. And then what you really wanna do is tell me talk through the method of how you want to do it. That's really what I want to see. So I'm going to add X mils from my 10 molar solution and X mil, Y mils of water into a container, mix them up. And there we go. We've got the new solution because that's the real, the, how we really solve this. Okay. All right. How much water must be added to, so yet another question. It's the same one. Yeah, I think that's the same one. So let me change it a little bit. How much water must be added to, let me just change this. Uh, let's say how much of a 10 molar solution will I need to create a, uh, let's say, three molar to create, I shouldn't say A, to create 1200 milliliters 
of a three molar solution. There we go. So let's solve that one instead. How much of a 10 molar solution? So this is still gonna be a dilution thing, but it's gonna be a little bit different. So I want the steps in order to get there. How would I, how would I make this happen? Okay, and we'll go over it in class, obviously. All right. And then if four, 500 mils of water are added to 100 mils of a 12 molar solution, what is the numularity? Again, it's another one of those. So let's just quickly talk about concentration of ions. We haven't talked about reactions yet. We're getting there and we will uh, momentarily, but let's talk about actual reactions and kind of ions because we've already had this. So it's not that much of a leap. So what is the molarity of sodium ions and chloride ions in a one molar solution of sodium chloride? Well, this one's purposely simple. Um, so sodium chloride, when we put it into solution, Whenever you put an ionic substance into solution, it always breaks apart into its ions. And we'll talk about when it does happen and when it doesn't. But I have Na plus and Cl minus, okay? So ultimately, I don't care about their arrow or the plus yet, but what we do end up with is two different ions, sodium and chloride. So for every one sodium chloride, I am going to get one sodium ion and one chloride ion. Okay, so what that means, because it's a one to one ratio for every one mole molar solution of sodium chloride, I have a one molar solution of sodium and a one molar solution of chloride. Let's do this next one. What is the molarity of barium chloride in the barium chloride solution? So I have BaCl2. I should end up with Ba2 plus and two Cl minuses. Right, so that's ultimately what we have in order to make the barium chloride. So for every one of these, I have one barium and I have two chlorides. And so here's kind of where, where we need to make the uh, adjustment. So if I have 0.5 molar solution of barium chloride, I would make 0.5 molar, so, 0.5 molar solution of barium and a one molar solution of chloride. So this feels a little bit strange because you start with half a mole and you end up with what looks like a mole and a half. But the truth of the matter is all of this together equals all of that together. And we're gonna look at this more. So this last question we'll talk about, and I just want you guys to be thinking about this. What is the concentration of each ion in a 0.25 molar solution? So write out what K3PO4 is gonna break into, and then write out what you imagine happens, okay? And I'll just add two or three extra here. Um, so same thing, how about a 0.15 molar solution of sodium uh, sulfate? And how about a 0 0.40 molar solution of, let's say, K2, well, that's not fun. Um, potassium, nope, I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna do um, iron hydroxide, okay? So same thing, I wanna know what concentrations you have of the two ions. All right, perfect. Next one is a bunch of other concentration units, but you get the idea.